let's start by talking about the overall political picture. Uh, a lot of coverage of potential elections. We don't have elections on right yet, but there's a lot of worry in, as I say, Tory-leaning yeah. papers about what's going to happen to the Conservative well, Party. Well, it's, 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 it's extraordinary. I mean, uh, we've got this story here about the potential number of seats that they could lose, uh, 59 seats if there were a general election tomorrow. Interestingly, though, it's not quite Corbyn bound for number 10 because he'd need the SNP to come on board He's as well. He's just short of 300. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they'd need the, the SNP to come on board. But I think what this is actually speaking to is this bigger story about what on earth is happening to the Tory base. Where are the activists? Mm. And, you know, I see it in Oxford, West and Abingdon. We've got the Vale of White Horse, which is uh, a council they are defending against us that we hope to take. And w we can't see them. They're, they're nowhere. And I think uh, what we're hearing on the doorsteps is people are so angry with the government. It's also never been more positive for us. And that's been, mm. what a nice change as a Lib Dem. I'll but come on to the Lib really, Dems really in just good. a second. <laughs> but before we leave the Conservative Party, Camilla, I suppose the question is how many of these Conservative activists are just staying at home in despair about Brexit? Well, how many are going to Nigel Farage's new party or to UKIP? I think it's more like the former. And of course, not just the activists staying at home but the big fear for the Tories is that their voters will stay at home and that will be the ultimate protest at the ballot box mm. not just for the locals but also the Euros. Um, suggestions here that you've got association chairman again willing Theresa May to stand down and this um, growing tide now Theresa May's downfall is depicted here in a graft and it's only going in one direction because it's not just grassroots and activists that now seem concerned there's been polling to suggest that more people having seen her as being resilient and a trooper more of the public now would rather she stood down than remain in place and I think when it comes to her personal approval rating that's serious for number 10 because before she had got quite a lot of support simply by keeping calm and carrying on I think the tide's turning. She was yeah. Mrs. Doggy. And she's got yeah. another six months, of course. Um, but there's talks of all sorts of plots going on in the Conservative yes. Party. And among those staying at home during the European elections, it was reported this week, is a certain Mr. Boris Johnson, who doesn't want to contest them because he thinks they're ridiculous. Well, I think most of the Brexiteers think that they're ridiculous. Why are we here fielding candidates in European parliamentary elections after we were supposed to have mm. left? But we and, I think, and I, th okay. no, but I think the ludicrous Let's nature of that isn't lost on voters either, who are scratching their head thinking, what on earth are we doing here? Out of, out of parliamentarians' hands as it should, and there's an independent process which I helped to set up, and I, I actually have faith in that, but in terms of faith in Jeremy Corbyn to tackle anti-Semitism, and I've spoken out about this, some Palestinian MP, a lot of the people who are, you know, spouting this stuff are doing it because they want to, you know, to speak out for Palestinians, and that's brilliant, and boy, do we need that. But I've said it before, and I'll say it again, you can be pro-Palestinian and also not stand for anti-Semitism, and wow. the two can exist together.